What's good with you, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. How you feeling? Man, I'm blessed, man. I can't complain at all. Even even during this quarantine situation and all everything, I'm still blessed. What about yourself? I'm feeling the same, bro. Still blessed, still breathing. Hey, man, I wanted to tap straight into it. Uh, so we don't got that much time. You was um top of 2020. I think you was pushing the Tiffany Haddish movie. Yeah, top yeah. of 2020, right? Like and you yeah. also was. Yeah, you also were talking about the importance of, like, your visuals. You wanted to get your visuals popping and anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in March, coronavirus shit hit. Like, how, how did that take effect of your plans for 2020? How did it affect you in getting your visuals popping? I still I still see you got popping visuals, but did it yeah. slow you down in any type of way? How did it affect you? Um, Just the way I approached the visuals, really. I think I was always going to get them done regardless, though. Um. I think with the the color visuals I did for the rest of the album was pretty simple where I was just in one studio, one camera guy, and um my guy Kev, you know, he 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 shot the Don't Wanna Leave video, the real love video. I've been working with him um for for a little while now. Um for I would say almost maybe the past six months, maybe five, six months. Okay. So, um we've been busting out a lot of visuals, so we just kind of got them all knocked out in like a weekend, you know. What right. I'm saying? It just made that sense of it, and it was just budget wise, it made a whole lot of sense. Facts. It ain't it ain't mess it up in any other type, any other type of forms because you might might want it to be a little bit more creative or do some acting in it. You know what I'm saying? Get some more people in it. Yeah. Or it I just honestly hot. think it really worked out for the best for this project in particular because I feel like if anything, that's how most of my visuals have been. You know, mm. really like you know, uh, pushing the envelope, you like these, these visuals are a lot more personal, right. and more, you know, sort of getting, to, getting to know who Jacob is, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like there's a lot of people who don't know, right? Like, you know what I mean? So I feel like I'm connecting on a personal level versus, you know, a production level that's just too big to really like, you know, really get that personal experience. But we ain't even worrying about the people that don't know, because there's a lot of people that know. Like, yeah, just yeah. to keep it a hundred, I posted. Well, you know, for me, I'm always, I'm always thinking about growing, right? Of course, so yeah, like, hell yeah. You know, for me, like, I'm always, I'm always hella grateful for, you know, the fans I've, I've accumulated, you know, since I started. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, you know, I'm just always finding for the next way to, like, all right, when I step into this next room, how can I? When I do my next tour, how can I go to theaters instead of small venues? Or mm -hmm. How can I go to arenas in the next three, four years? You know, just me, though. Just nah, me. facts. You definitely got one of those small, like, cult following. Because when I posted a flyer, shit, my flyers, especially interviews, that shit did, like, almost <laughs> 700 likes. I had, like, 20 people reposted it. Like, yeah. oh, my God, I got a crush on Jacob. I can't wait till you do this. Yeah. So, like, you're definitely the talk of the town. Like, you're definitely popping out here. So, I'm definitely yeah. going to give you that. That respect yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I want to tap into connection three. So, how is like how is people taking it far as from your perspective? Um, I'm I'm seeing a lot of love, man. I'm seeing a lot of love. I feel like I also I also see a lot of um, you know, I feel like 35 songs shocked a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, especially for people who weren't um uh, in tune with the past project. But that's the reason why I put the last two on the on on this last one because you know um it takes a while for good music to just spread you know what mm -hmm. i mean like a lot of those great songs that people are now just discovering came out three four years ago that's you know right. what I'm so and i feel like it was important for me to redistribute that good music because it needs to be heard you know what i mean like i didn't put all that work in for that music not to be heard so you know if it's gonna take that time or if it's gonna take me you know re-releasing albums for people to be like 35 songs, let me actually give it a listen. Like, damn, like what? I've been, I've been sleeping, bro. It, it shocked me because it's kind of like a compilation album, right? And so I was a big fan of, and I still am. I was a big fan of the weekend. So when the weekend first came out, he was dropping like um House of Balloons, uh Echoes of Silence, and it was another one, right? So when right. he dropped, when he dropped Trilogy, he did the same thing. Right. So I was like, okay, cool. So when I see how people are taking it from you, I'm like. Yeah, you're acting like this has never been done before. Like, right, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, why y'all so shocked? And right. I'm like, people do that. And I feel well, like more people feel should like, do it. Because most people do that when they feel like they get to a certain level. You know mm. what I mean? But for me, it's like, I love me. <laughs> they can love Jacob. You know what I'm saying? That's good. So if you don't show people that out the gate, they're not going to believe you. Mm, you know what I'm saying? So 
Um, for me, it was like, yeah, I'm about to drop 30 songs. And that people going to think it's just <clears throat> brand new songs. But, you know, they really just, it's new to them, but it ain't new to me. No, I think you know, more people it. should do it because, like like you said, especially being independent like yourself, a lot of artists go on and they, they want to keep dropping album to album. And it's like, bro, you got so much dope content. You want everybody to hear this. Like, you, I think more people should do it. Honestly, I think, I th I think yeah. it was genius. Was that your idea or who creative idea was that to do that? It was collective. You know, me and my team, my, my manager, JR, and my moms, we were just like, because we felt like even when we put out the last album, uh, Connection 2, last mm -hmm. year, we felt like a lot of people were still discovering the 2016 project, Connection 1. So I was just like, let's just re-release it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like The songs are Smart. still growing. And a, lot, and a lot of the songs that people love today came out years ago. You know what I mean? Like, they don't understand, like, the work that art has been putting in for the past 10 years. 100%. You know I mean? Like, they don't understand, like, the, the grind. You know what I mean? Like, we, we sometimes we see people and they just blow up and out of nowhere. But that's how we is. That's how, I feel like that's how our culture is. We're we in that microwave culture, bro. <laughs> yeah, we don't jump on till we see motherfuckers from the whole, everybody across the world jumping on. You know what I'm saying? So... It takes it takes that type of confidence to be able to just be like, all right, let's do it. But you, and you the, the the sweet thing about that because it is bittersweet, right? The sweet thing about that to me, in my eyes, when I look at your career and even just studying, you had success along the way, but yep. it was consistent. It wasn't like too much at one time, but then you fell off because I feel like yeah. a lot of times, even the biggest stars, you know, what I'm saying I don't want to say no name because I don't want my words to get twisted, but <laughs> sometimes the biggest stars they get that that they hot when they young and then they can't make a grown up song because the world st still see them as that 13 year old child, that 14 year old child. And yeah. I think that's actually dope that you've been consistent. It ain't been too much, but people can see the growth. Yeah, they yeah. respect that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been it's been real grassroots work. Like I feel like, I'm, and I'm so grateful for that. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's been important on my mental too. You know what I mean? Like I would have been a different different person if I if I went like, super super triple platinum at 14 years old mm. you know what i mean and you just would have because it's just yo the industry man what you absorb yourself with and just like the 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 rooms you get into when you're doing those type of numbers and how many people are coming at you when you get that type of clout you know it it, it, it mess with you you know what i'm That's saying so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for my slowly but surely success like you know it's been i've been able to you know provide for myself and my family so it's dope it's dope and, and it's humbling as well man and, and it, it just teaches you so much on the way i was looking at like all of your interviews you know what i'm saying it just and you're just so down to earth and you're so cool especially for somebody to not really had to live that average lifestyle because you've been successful since young like you never had to really have a job like a nine to five because you always been <laughs> successful right but you still yeah. You're still humble and you're still like approachable and cool and understanding and transparent. And I definitely fuck with that. Um, so salute to you for that. Um, mm -hmm. as far as you've been R and B singer, right? <laughs> I was watching this interview with Bobby Valentino and he was like, R B he felt like R and B singers are too cool to collab. And all the rappers, they all collab. That's why I rap is so lit. Do you think that's true? Man, I've been saying that for the past few interviews. Mm. For like all these R and B artists just got like I, I don't know. Ego is through the roof right now. I don't know what's going on. Like we can't, we can't link up, or it's just like a no response type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, or or sometimes a simple no is cool. Like, but hey, look, I ain't really doing features right now. I'm focused on doing these type of features with this type of artist right now. Bet you know what I'm saying? But it's like I feel like no one's really like trying to collaborate. No one's really trying to to grow. Everybody's kind of like, and it's it's respectable. Kinda in a sense. I'm gonna say, yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's everybody ain't really like linking up how we should be. You know what I'm saying? I feel right. the same way. I feel the same way. Yo, I just I wonder because it's crazy because you would think the rappers would be like that, not the R&B singers. Like because that's the industry where we should you want you should want to get together and make this song like that shit is fire. But like yeah. I guess it's the opposite for some reason. I don't know why, man. Yeah, um. Man. I don't know either, but you know, for for me, you know, no matter what what it is, I'm always gonna I'm always gonna break the ice and be that guy and be like, look, let's we gotta do a record together, we gotta do a remix together, we gotta we gotta do this, we gotta do that. You know what I mean? Like I'm always just gonna keep pushing for it. Now I want to get into just some like man conversation, right? Like away from the 
industry, but it's, it's kind of tied in the industry because like you saying your first time dating in the industry. Mm -hmm. First of all, how, how is it? It's you incredible. Know, you like it? It's you incredible, think? bro. Honestly, it's really, it's really one of the best things I've done. I feel like because I feel like, you know, we we understand each other's schedule. We understand the the just how how busy our schedules can get. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And like, we understand distance. We understand work. Like it's it's beautiful, bro. Honestly, you, and it worked out perfectly because we both were filming in Chicago mm. at, at that time. So, you know, like literally, the shower was two blocks away from the Empire set. Right. Do you believe in um Zodiacs at all? Uh, I kind of get into it. I'm not like super deep into it. Sometimes I look it up. You 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 a Leo, right? A Leo. Yeah. Your girlfriend is she a Gemini? A yeah, Gemini, yeah. When you get a chance, right? Mm -hmm. Read the compatibility for you too, and it's gonna blow no, you did. away. I did, I did. The shit is uh, almost perfect. It's almost yeah. It looks like <laughs> like I'm, the shit. I'm like damn. <laughs> That's what I was gonna ask you. Do you think that y'all get along because y'all understand each other industry, or do y'all get along because that's just y'all personal traits? I think I think it's a little bit of both. I feel like mm. I feel like on a deeper level, it's probably more of the personal thing to be honest, um, because. Oh no, we've been friends for we've been friends for a while. So when it when it came down to just us linking up on that level, it was like it just worked. Right. You know what I mean, and we I think we still even under don't even understand why sometimes we just like how do you even get here? Yo, you know faithful, I mean? faithful men is popping right now. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I don't know if it's because we get older. Because I can, cause listen, listen, listen. I got a girl for That's myself. Funny. I got a girl for myself, and it's crazy. I don't know if it's because we get older, but like. Back in the day, I just wanted like niggas wasn't on the same shit. Like, it's is it is a real thing to it's, be faithful now. Like, not just for show. Changed. It's definitely changed because I feel like uh, maybe a few years ago everybody was like, "Fuck these hoes!" Like, Fact. Like, not everybody. Nah, wanna, it ain't. <laughs> everybody want to be booed up right now. You feel it me? ain't like fuck these hoes, nigga. You, yeah, you yeah, like. <laughs> A good strong woman for sure, for sure. Nah, uh, I don't. I don't know what's. It's, I don't know what's in the energy. Maybe it's quarantine. Maybe it's. I don't know. Maybe it's just. It's that time. You said um when you when you decided to to make it like official, you had already knew in your mind that you was going to be serious because you just wasn't treating her like you were treating everybody else before. Yeah, yeah. I was just already. I was already communicating on a level of just. It was a lot of just depth in our conversations and just we was just I don't know, for me, I was already sort of like cutting people off because I wasn't really connecting with no other female like that anyway. What so, what, what do you think changed? Was it you or was it her? Um, I think it was just I think it was gradual for, for mm. both of us, to be honest. You know, I think um we I think we both knew immediately once we started hanging out that we were like we clicked. You know right. what I mean? I just don't. I don't. I don't think neither of us thought we would go to that level, though. You know what I'm right. saying? And I, I say that because like that's what shocked us. Like, what? We, we, uh, <laughs> year, and now y'all here, like, year and, in, and some real. change in. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> I say that because like I, um I had a conversation with my girl and I was telling her, you know, I'm faithful because of me. You get what I'm saying? And I think like at first, at first, before she understood, I think she took it wrong because of course everybody wanna be somebody else because at one point right, like right. yeah, I wanted I wanna be that special one. But it was right. like in order for me to be a good man, I gotta change for myself first. You know what I'm saying? It's for nobody else is for myself. So when you said that, it clicked with me, it resonated with me because it's like, yo, when I was going into a relationship, it was like, yo, I'm just ready. Like I'm tired of being this ain't shit nigga. Like that shit not even cool no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like people can judge yeah. you a lot by how they, how you treat your woman. And that's something that right. All men should be taken serious about. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. So it was like, you know, you're exactly right. I feel like you gotta, if you' about to be in a relationship and you trying to, you trying to work on yourself. You, like when they, when you say work on yourself, you really gotta work on yourself. Facts. You know I mean, like, if you, if that's the goal to sort of, you know, condense how many girls is coming to the crib per night. You know what I'm saying? Because I was at, I was at that, I was in a place where like it was just nonstop. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like. And I was just gotten to a point like, man, this ain't this really ain't even safe. But facts, not nah, facts. You know Niggas don't want to talk about safe, that though. This ain't safe. You right. know what I mean? A girl can pull out her camera. She could plant. She could steal money. She could plant some anything. Anything can anything, happen, so, bro. Um, I was just like, let me stop that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm gonna bring a girl in this house, 
it's got to be good energy. It's got to be genuine. If I'm just friends with her and then we never go to that level, that's cool. But I just got to make sure I'm fully trustworthy. And just instead of bringing strangers in my in my personal space, you know what I'm saying? It's it's dangerous if you ain't got nobody. And I'm in Chicago. I'm by myself. Mm. <laughs> you feel me? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. Facts. Yeah. You don't know none of these. Like, you just dropping your address. You feel me? Like, <laughs> nah, that ain't that ain't that ain't smooth, Jake. Nah, facts. Hey, I want to switch it up a little bit. I gotta um, I gotta. Like I said, man, I got a lot of questions for you because you're such a cool dude. And um, I just want to – let's talk about the shift real quick. So, of course, you've been singing your whole life. Everybody right. at, like, they don't know that for some reason. But you've been singing your entire life, and then you wanted to start acting. What made you ha – what made this happen? How did that work? Like, let's talk about that. Well, honestly, acting came sort of at the same time, honestly, because when I moved to Atlanta, I started getting in acting classes – um and stuff like that but i wasn't really booking any big roles quite yet i was just booking like commercial roles and you know c cable commercial like little spots or whatever voiceovers and, sh and shit like that and then um it wasn't until this film called no actually before that i'm i'm, so, I'm sorry one tree hill was uh my first guest star role on a tv show and i was like this kind of cool you know what i mean and i just kept going with the acting but that was before i got signed when mm. I got signed to RCA, I did Black Nativity. I did Maze Runner. Mm -hmm. That's what's um, fire. Um, I was still signed during those movies. You know what I mean? And I was still putting out a lot of music. I was still doing a lot of shows. I remember going to having to do shows on the weekend because I was filming on Maze Runner. So it was, it was some shows I was pulling up and my hair was so crazy because I was having to look like a caveman <laughs> on, on the Maze Runner set. So I was having to put on a hat and kind of like, you know, dress up as Jacob. Jacob right, a lot of you know mm -hmm. outside the movie, movie stuff. So, um, it really came all at the same time. I would say I just feel like once once I fell out with my the label I was with, I, I leaned on acting a, a lot more to you know sort of survive. You know what I'm saying? So and, yeah. I wanted to um, I actually I was reading my questions. It's like, damn, I wish I could have your moms beside you doing this interview because your mom's is kind of young too as well. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she just celebrated that 41st? Uh, 40, 42nd. 42nd. Happy uh, related birthday. But um, so what I was saying is like, you know, as as millennials and creatives, everybody want to move to Atlanta, LA, um, Houston, DC, wh wherever, like that's where the creative space that they could be creative. And mm -hmm. I was like, it's dope that at a pretty young age, your mom's like, yo, let me go to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, did you think that she actually helped set that up for you? Did she make the moves for you to, to be successful in the long run? Yeah, yeah. She was completely, like, 100% instrumental in my mm. career. You know what I mean? Uh, I would say, you know, my whole my whole team, really, like, everybody around me was so supportive of Jacob. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm truly grateful for because it's a lot of young kids just making it out of just with no support you know what i mean they got a different hunger they got a different mindset you know what i'm saying so it's like when you don't have that support i can only imagine what it's like then mentally you know what i mean so i always was in a space of just they always kept me motivated always kept me in a space where i was continuing to have fun right you know, with my craft and um i never really worried about anything so um yeah she was incredible like she still is every day like she in the office like every day working on jacob <laughs> you know what i'm saying like mm. you know it's 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 really incredible um everybody around me was just so like supportive like let's we, let's stay let's right there jacob. for the kids that don't have the support that you might have had right mm -hmm. how important is it to get in those acting classes how do they get into the acting classes like how do they go about because everybody can't just go to Atlanta, move to Atlanta, right? Like, right. how can they get help? How can they learn from Jacob Lattimore and to being in, in the next movie and to being in the next music video, maybe? How do they do that? Well, you know what's so funny? I started in acting classes in Milwaukee. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a, um, I'm not even sure if it's still up anymore, but it was a company called First Stage I went to. I would go there after elementary school, work on improv, work on, just be it in the arts, you know what I'm saying? So I would say for anybody, do do your research in your and whatever whatever 
part of the U.S. you in. If it's in your state, if it's in if it's in the state next door to your state, like drive drive an hour or two to to visit some of those acting classes or those. It, they're smaller agents all over the U.S. Like there's so there's so much acting going on in Chicago that I didn't know about. There's a lot of agents in Chicago. There's a lot of actors. There's a lot of f stuff filming in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. So I, I I'm pretty sure that there's a lot more going on in other states because right now it, films are really trying to find ways to be ch be cheaper. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to film. They they may film in your hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's going to cost less money. Ahead. Yeah, you want to be ahead of the curve. You know what I'm saying? You may be able to get a check and film film in your city. You know what I'm saying? Start off as an extra. Start off start off like you will shine. You will shine if, if, if you got something. You know what I'm saying? But just make sure you putting yourselves in those rooms and do your research, man. The internet. You right. can look up Use anything. it. Use it. Yo, you, you, said, look up you, you said you don't really uh, wear the, the Milwaukee jersey and the hats and things like that. Right, Bro, right. I'm sorry. I just I can't hear the challenge when it's one thing. <laughs> Why don't you? Because, bro. I'm from Baltimore, right? And I know a, probably, a lot of people probably laugh like, it sounds like it, but yeah, right. I'm from Baltimore, and we don't think we have the resources. So it's like once one person get out, we expect mm -hmm. them to all put, we expect them to put on for Baltimore in its entirety. So when you right. say you're from Milwaukee, I'm like, the first thing I think is like, Milwaukee? Right. Everybody needs to know that because it's like, right, right. nobody knows about it that, to, no. to not be as ignorant, you know what I'm saying? But just as an outsider, it's like Milwaukee, Right. Yeah, why why aren't you so Milwaukee? Why aren't you putting on them jerseys to, to put on right. every day? Well, I mean, for me, it was like I've never even been a jersey wear, period. You okay. feel me? Like, I've never right. even right. anybody else's jersey. You feel me? Right. So, like, even when I was living in Milwaukee, I wasn't really rocking that much Milwaukee, like, you know. Yeah, you okay, familiar. Like, just, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, you know, for me, you know, I, I always thought of saying it was enough, but you know, when we in the world of social media, we in the world of, you know, perception, they want to see it. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, I understand that. I can respect that. You know what I mean? I can be like, that's why when I went to, when I did Milwaukee Summerfest uh, last year, I, I wore I wore a Milwaukee Bucks jersey for the first time. Yeah. So that was so big for, for Jacob. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They're like, oh shit, like he got the jersey on. <laughs> He's coming back to the city to perform i think i opened up for a boogie out there so oh, that it, was, it was dope you know what i mean i could i could tell that you know that's that's something that they that's something that we love and i'm just not yeah into. man get you a tattoo shit fuck it <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna get i'm gonna give me some more brewers hats all that man, let people know do you do you feel any pressure at all from your city like you gotta be that that star to put the city on your shoulders type um not necessarily but you know i feel like I feel like it's something I, I, I definitely, I feel like I'm responsible for, but I don't necessarily feel pressure. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I just, I've always just been me. You know what I mean? And I've never been afraid to say where I'm from. You know, I feel like media outlets will say, Jacob's from Atlanta. When they know I said I'm from Milwaukee, I live in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. I never spoke to you, and I I can I came up with that. You just got to listen. Like, niggas be wanting to take it and run with it, like. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just like, I'm from Milwaukee, like, I don't have to, and, and for me, it was like, I've never been the person to prove where I'm from, like, mm -hmm. I'm just like, why do I, my family know, I don't right. need to, my friends know, I don't, I, I really don't need the whole city to know, I mean, right. but shit, I guess this is what we care about, so look, I'm from Milwaukee. Yeah, they were. They were crucified, like somebody from Baltimore. If you don't say it at least ten times a day, you ain't from there. Like they're gonna crucify you. But um, right. let's 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 take a step back real quick. So you um, you always were you were successful since young. Mm -hmm. You never really had a nine to five. You ain't have to. Mm -hmm. Your mom's put you in places to succeed, so you ain't have to do that. So that's not a bad thing. A lot of people look at things. And want to be so negative, but I want to ask you: Is do you think honestly, if you could look at yourself in the mirror, do you think because of that, because of your background, sometimes you lack understanding of the everyday individual that might work? Hell yeah! Mm. Hell yeah, bro! Yes. Absolutely. How frustrating is that? How frustrating is that for you? It's 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 so weird to think. It's so weird to be like, damn. I wish I had a little bit of struggle so I could relate right now. <laughs> 
Like nah, I get not, it. not in the sense of not in the sense of that I didn't struggle. I'm saying, I mean, I made my mom and my pops may have struggled for me, but when when I was 18, I had a you know what I mean I had a Coogan check waiting for me. I was fine. You know what I mean? Like I was okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I just I don't know that 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 frustrated me a lot. So you know when when people ask me the question of like what kind of advice you got for somebody you know coming up and I just be like you know I don't even try to give a fake answer I try to be as real as possible with my answer you know what I mean like I try to I try to give as many resources as I can but I'm not gonna sit and act like like I my experience was the same as yours you mm. know what I'm saying and it's okay you- and I had to I had to realize like that's okay like. That's I shouldn't feel bad for that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not my fault. You know that's what I mean? No. Nah. And I mean, honestly, we need to normalize that because shit, that that's what we want as parents. Like we want to be able to take our children out of our circumstances or the things we had to go through so they don't have to go through it again. You know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't we want that? And mm-hmm. that's I was just curious because that's not really your fault. But I know a lot of times miscommunication. Sometimes don't be neither one of our faults. I'm not saying me and you, but just as humans, but it's still miscommunication. And that can be yeah. frustrating just at a, as an individual trying to speak to somebody sometimes. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's and why it, I want to and it got and it got for for a while I was like, well then well, let me let me just go kick it more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let me go out and just kick it. You know, I felt I felt like I needed to to sort of do that, just, just kind of feel, I don't know, normal. You know what right. I'm saying? Like and those those are me just having those experiences that wanted wanting to have more experiences as adult as an adult on my own. You know, if it was going to the club, if it was, you know, just walking around with the homies, like just having that experience because I feel like those are the experiences you really miss out on that like that high school experience or that college experience. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I was I was on the road between thirteen and sixteen. You feel me? Like I was doing, I was in the studio. I was flying to Miami. I was flying to LA, recording with big songwriters and producers, running into the biggest celebrities in the world. Like, it was just a dip, it was a different lifestyle. It was different. But for the people that got it fucked up, because some people will have it fucked up, they act like you ain't go through nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah, act yeah. Like, you ain't see no sh- struggles. What are some of the misconceptions that of being successful from a young age that the people don't see? What are some of the things that you had to go through? And it might not have been struggling not having nowhere to live but it was a struggle right. what are some of right. those things right it was like i remember i remember having to stay with me my mom everybody we had to stay with one it was like 30 people in one house but you know at at 14 that's really just fun you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying that's just like this the life we got producers downstairs working on you know working on uh on, on tracks and we got songwriters in one room working on working on something else and you know, we got somebody going to get groceries and trying to make, just bringing that, bringing home a bunch of McDonald's. Everybody just eating off the dollar menu. You know what I'm saying? Like, but even sometimes, is- even sometimes that can be stressful because I um, yeah. we go back to Michael Jackson, right? We t- we you see how successful he was from a young age. He was a star. You know what I'm saying? And he, right, he right. said, man, he cried because it was times he wanted to be a kid. Did you ever feel like it was times where you didn't want to write, where you didn't want to sing, but you had to because this is my job. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a bunch of times I didn't feel like recording. Mm. Absolutely, I was like, I just want to go. I just want to go chill. I want to go chill by the pool or something. You know what I mean? Like, but we had to put that work in, and those are the type of sacrifices uh, early on I had to make. You know what I mean? And um, and that's what it takes to really be a part of the be a part of the music industry. You got to be obsessed with the studio. You got to be right. obsessed with this shit, like everything. You got to be obsessed with reading scripts, like. You know what I mean? You got to. Yo, we having a great conversation. I promise you I'm coming to an end, bro. It's just it's it's a great good. conversation. I'm loving it. I'm, 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 I'm enjoying the, the dialogue, man. Uh, So, yeah. you Emmett on a shot. First of all, how did you how did you book that role? Like, how did you get the shot book in your pocket now? It's lit. Like, how did you get that? Honestly, I think all the experiences I had before the shot really helped me for that moment. Um, Black Nativity, Maze Runner, Slight, um, uh, Collateral Beauty, um, Detroit. Like all those, all those projects really helped me um, sort of master, you know, that audition for the shot. I feel like because 
for one, you know, all my all my friends are really like are that energy, that vibe, that authenticity. You feel me? So, you know, and I just thought about Milwaukee. I just thought about where I'm from and just seeing what I what just remembering what I saw at that at that age and just like tapping into it finally. You know what I mean? And I feel mm-hmm. like it wasn't until the shy where I kind of like went back home with my character as far as like my personal character a little bit and just like that's when it really started shining. Everybody was like, Emmett, yo, you Emmett. You know <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's just so powerful to see a young black man on screen uh, being relatable to other young black men. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, I go through that with my baby mama, too. Facts. <clears throat> like, I sell shoes, too. Facts. Facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, it's crazy that you said it, right? So I was reading. Uh, do you... You, you you work out a lot. You said you, you you starting to work out a lot. Lately, I've been falling off. I just called Come my friend yesterday. You bullshit, bro. You bullshit. We I just got out the gym. It's like, been about on. it's been about two three weeks. Come on, I bounce back. Yeah, you gotta get the bounce back. But look, um, so it's crazy. I was gonna ask you, do you read at all? Um, not enough, honestly. So I just I, I read, force myself to read more. I just read Fifty Cent book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. You should tap into it. That shit is fire. Okay. When it when but, it dropped? Um, it dropped not too long ago. Okay. Get into it. It's, it's, that shit is fire, bro. I promise. So I was talking about how I say that to say it's crazy that you sell shoes because in his book he speaks specifically how he was in New York and a shoe store was about to close, and he bought the inventory, all the shoes because his son loves shoes, and mm. he sent it to his son to open up his own shoe store and oh, be his own retailer. But his son, being young at the time, didn't really understand the importance of what he just did. Right, and he just right. bombed it, and he ain't do nothing with it. Like, <laughs> and we talk about Emmett, right? Like, we talk yeah, about right, it, right. Like, you could have been real life. You could have been goat. dot com. You get what I'm saying? Like, cause this yeah. is before goat, and um, I forgot the other sneaker shoot stores. That's Ooh. crazy, yo. So I was like, that's crazy. That's just the uh, I'm just speaking about the book. But yo, yeah, yeah. you getting on shot, right? Did you understand how TV shows try to dick artists when it comes to music and contracts. Did you understand that at that point, at that time? Say that one more time. So I know this didn't happen to you. However, TV shows some try, sometimes try to fuck artists when it comes to making their music and promoting their music mm. as well as the show. Did you, did you know anything about this at the time? Um, no. Nah. And, and for me, I didn't, I didn't have that experience. Right, right. right. I was asking because I was like, it's crazy because... You can be on a show, and I see how you're moving with your music, and it's dope, but there's some people out there that's on some TV shows that can't move like that because in their contract, right. it's just not allowed. Yeah, yeah. And that's a blessing that you wasn't caught up in, in, in no situation like that. Yeah, I think, you know, I feel like that's I, that's 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 crazy to me. I, I yeah. Like, you ain't but, know nothing about that? No, no. I, I've never I've never heard of that before. I mean, but that goes to show, man, it's all about what you negotiate in your in your paperwork. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um I think for me I was already an artist before the shot, so you know, to come at to come at my contract like that is just kinda unfair. You feel right. me? So, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Like, no, I know I was doing before the shot, right? I say that because a lot of artists that go into acting are artists before whatever TV show they are on, right? And I um when I first tapped into you, bro, I swear I was um and hopefully you don't have no problem with this, but I uh I looked at you and I thought of Ro Timmy. Because Ro Timmy mm-hmm. could sing his ass off too. And he's My a birthday. great actor. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, like this nigga remind me of Ro Timmy. And Ro mm-hmm. Timmy had like he was saying that like he glad that he didn't because he he could he had a chance to be somebody on another show trying not to mm-hmm. say no names or anything for respect wise. And it didn't happen. He was saying that it was he, he's happy that it didn't happen because in that show, the contract mm. just wasn't right for his music. He wasn't able. He wasn't. He wouldn't have been able to move right. how he was able to move as an artist now. Right. And I was like, damn, that's cool. That's dope. And I was just really just. Peace. I was looking at y'all too. I'm like, yo, that's that's lit. Because a lot of people were are, are suffering through that, man. Yeah, um, let's crazy, talk. You know what's so funny? Me and Ro, me and Ro, I did, I did Black Nativity. Uh, Ro Timmy was in. He he played the cop in Black Nativity. So I met Ro like way before. You know what I'm saying? Like me and him was kicking it. You feel me? So I was just like, you know, that's 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 really big bro right there. And I'm I'm happy for him. That's crazy that you don't have none of these features. Like, cause you got oh, no, me and Ro working now. And then like you got some artists in the awesome that you can text. I'm talking about like Chris Brown. Like you said you text them. And yeah, I'm yeah. like, 
Why you don't got a song with this nigga? <laughs> like, yeah, see, see me, see me, see me. Uh, he, he see me. He see me. I, I seen him in Chicago not too long ago, man. We we uh we actually went to the club with him. Super cool dude, man. He I, he actually really loved the old thing back video. He uh he told me he was like that old thing back video hard. Nah, you, you know? been doing your thing and you're a dancing motherfucker. So like y'all might do some shit together. Yo, like you might have to get on your uh your Jamie Fox shit. You know Jamie Fox used to have parties at his crib yeah. in L.A. And yeah, just have got, the studio downstairs. Like, look, I'm gonna have a big party. Just everybody right. come downstairs. Everybody <laughs> come down. You got it, and you gotta jump on right then and there. Facts. Yo, yeah. talking about the shot, man. Um, how you've been in a few movies with a uh, few big actors. Like you did a movie with Will Smith. Like you know what I'm saying. But what's the difference? And what did you see? Was the difference from being in a a, a successful TV show versus just being in big time movies? Um, honestly, I feel like the TV show just connected with people a little harder. I feel like, um, with, with Collateral Beauty and, and Will Smith and, you know, just the whole, that whole team, like, Will Smith is just one of the names, Ed Norton, Heather Mirren, like, it's, the cast was super loaded. I feel like it was just a big learning experience for me, and I was, like, the only, like, newcomer, you know, around mm. these actors who who've done trillions of films and trillions in box office numbers. You know what I'm saying? So um, I feel like the big looks are really, are really dope and they're really, they're a blessing to have, but it isn't until you connect, you know what I'm saying? Like if, like you probably connect with a much more smaller film than, you know, the rock movie that came out yesterday, which did billion dollars at box office. Like, that's a big movie, but you don't really know nothing about it. But you connected with Juice way harder. You connected Fuck. with Fuck. you connected with you connected with Friday way harder. Mm -hmm. you, know what I'm you know, Boys in the Hood. You connected with that like way harder. So it's just it's those certain films that just connect with the culture and they just create a stamp on your career. And I feel like The Shy is that for me. So. Um, you know, Collateral Beauty was an amazing look for Jacob, though, to be in a scene next to Will because, you know, that's something I aspire to be, you know, something that level of of talent and just career. But it's, you know, it's it's tougher now because back then, just how they, how they, so much music is pumping out, they pumping out so much film. I feel like, you know, things are not shot the way they used to be or they're not really taking their time to be written how they used to be. So, Everything is just such a rush to just get a bunch of content out versus like so that's why every every now and then you see those those key TV shows that just are really really great and they stand out from the others. Facts, yo, I wanted to ask you, um, how much of the character Emmett is actually who you are? Um, probably just the personality swag and 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 um, this probably just the goofiness, the cheesiness, the 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 smiles. Everything <laughs> else is kind of. I feel like you know, with the women, you know, it's it's, it's some. I tap into somebody I I, I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just as far as having that approach. But other than that, you know, I feel like it's 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 a fun role. It's a fun role to play. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be in some of those experiences in real life. You know, like having <clears throat> baby trying to figure out like. You know, what yeah, saying? what's going Man, on? I'm in the basement. I'm in like, no, no, I'm cool. I asked that because you said, uh, you, um, y'all shoot what four, four months out of the year, four months out of the year, yo. Yeah. How hard is it to get out of character then to come back and get back in character when that's not even who you are? Is that even challenging? How hard is that for you? Um, not with the shy so much. It's, it, I've had some, um, some roles that's been like that, but the shy is, is more closer to home to me than any other role I played, you know, so, you know, jumping out of the shy really kind of, it's a really, it's, it's not that, it's not that hard. Yes. Yeah, it don't even feel like I'm going to work sometimes. You know what I mean? I'm really can just, I really can just have a bunch of fun. Yo, in your breakfast club interview, Charlamagne the God, he asked you, did you learn anything from the character Emmett? And you was like, nah, it's just a role that you can have fun with. Kind of similar to what we were talking about. <laughs> well, yeah, now thought, though, <laughs> I might say has that changed now though. Um, as far as I mean, when I when I said no, I feel like it was it wasn't nothing new I've learned as far as like you know a lot of a lot of no babies no a lot of that stuff was installed in me like young young 
You know what I'm saying? Like before the shot, you know what right. I'm saying? Like strap up, all that. So, you know, the way Emmett was moving, has been moving. <laughs> you know, I just, I was already like, I'm a lot more mature than this character. So it's just, I didn't really feel like I learned nothing new. As far as, as that, I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, so, I'm Jacob. I, I'm Jacob. I look at it. I looked at it like, all right, so you actually have a, a great point, right? But I was looking at it like, you know, because he's a person, because you never had any children, you know what I'm saying? When you are acting as somebody, you got to almost become this character. So now, yeah. you can, now you can learn how it feels to be taking care of kids. You can learn how it feels to have Somewhat. to get out there. Right. Somewhat, yeah. And sell shoes. Yeah, no, yeah. So it's probably the closest experience you can have. You know what I mean? You can be like, damn, like. Make sure you had kids when you're ready. Cause I remember the first season, little homies was just they they just would not stop crying, yo. I was just like, <laughs> how do y'all do this? Like, how do y'all make them stop? Now you you, you know learn I mean? how 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 it is to be a pops. You know what I mean? And I'm really like I'm really sweating. You like you know like you know your baby crying in a public place. You just like, <sighs> whew, it's getting hot in here. Yeah, yeah, he just be crying. It's all good. I mean, now he be all right. You know what I mean? You really like you really nervous because you got you got directors and camera people waiting on you, like the waiting waiting on you to like start the scene and you can't start it because he going crazy in your home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey man, connection three is out right now. Um yes, yo, you getting a lot of publicity and a, and just a lot of recognition because you are an artist, but you also getting a lot of recognition because you're an actor, you play mm -hmm. Emmett in a shy. Does it ever get annoying at any point when people try to like put you in a box and not even intentionally, but just don't know? So you're like, Oh, yeah, I know Jacob Lattimore, he's the actor, he's Emmett on the show. When you're like, Nah, I actually just dropped the album and you should check it out. It's called Connection Three. Does that ever <laughs> get annoying to you? Nah, not really. I just feel like you know, when people, I feel like I'm just still growing, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't get frustrated because I feel like I'm still growing, even though you know, I've done so much. You know, it's just like, and I think that's what my generation has to has to learn. No matter how much you done did, it's like tomorrow is a new day. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you got to keep keep growing, keep being a student, keep keep spreading the word because, you know, and, and it just shows you can't really get too comfortable. You know what I mean? Right. The world is too big. The world is too big. Everybody don't know who you is yet. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? No matter how big the platform is. Like it's massive, but it can be more. Right. You know what I mean? So I like um I think I think that's what I tap into and I just be like, hey, you know what I mean? I also do music as well. You right. know what I mean? You didn't know I've been doing music since I was nine years old. I actually I actually been doing it before the act. You should actually check it out. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you I'm glad you're a big fan of the show though. You know, I just kinda approach it like that versus right. you know Yo, man, thanks for the interview, man. Uh super, super thank you to your mom's uh 